This is section 5.2, Ways to Prove that Quadrilaterals are Parallelograms. We know from the previous section that we did in class that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. So on this quadrilateral I've drawn here, if I know this is a parallelogram, then I know AD is congruent to BC, and I know AB is congruent to DC. The opposite sides are congruent. We also know that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are congruent. So I would know that angle A would be congruent to angle C, and angle D would be congruent to angle B. The opposite angles are congruent. And I also know that if I were to draw in the diagonals, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So those two diagonals must cut each other in half. This would have to equal this, and this would have to equal this. They cut each other in half. They bisect each other. So those are things that I know are true about parallelograms. But what if I stumble upon like a random quadrilateral in the wild, in the jungle of life, and I want to know if that quadrilateral is a parallelogram? How can I tell if my wild quadrilateral is a parallelogram? Well, let's consider this. Suppose we find a quadrilateral, and we don't know if it's a parallelogram, but it's a quadrilateral, it's got four sides, and both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Does that make it a parallelogram? I know the opposite is true. I know that if it's a, par if it's a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. But what if I just have a quadrilateral in which the opposite sides are congruent? Does it have to be a parallelogram? Well, let's think about this. What if I draw in a diagonal? Like that. So I draw in a diagonal, and I look at these two triangles that I've just formed by drawing this diagonal. I've got this triangle up here, the one I just traced in red, and I've got this triangle down here traced in blue. Those two triangles share, or have two p pairs of sides congruent, and they share QS. So by side, 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 those two triangles are congruent. If those two triangles are congruent, then I've got some congruent angles. I know angle, let me get rid of some of this. I know angle SQR is congruent to angle TSQ. If those two triangles were congruent, those two angles would correspond with each other. Well, if that's true, those are alternate interior angles for TS and QR. So since triangle TSQ is congruent to triangle RQS, angle SQR is congruent to angle QST. That's because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But angle SQR and angle QST are alternate interior angles for TS and QR. So TS is parallel to QR because alternate interior angles congruent implies parallel lines. So I've got that one set of my lines are parallel. TS is parallel to QR. Analogously, 
I have another pair of alternate interior angles. Angle QSR is congruent to angle TQS. By the same process, that tells me that TQ is parallel to SR. So then I have a parallelogram in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and that's exactly the definition. Sorry, I have a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and that's exactly the definition of a parallelogram. So I know that my quadrilateral, TSRQ, must be a parallelogram. That is a loose verbal and proof of this theorem. If both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That is the converse of this first theorem up here. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. So it turns out we can show a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if we know that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That quadrilateral will have to be a parallelogram then. So that's one way we can show that our quadrilateral in the wild is a parallelogram, if we find that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. But there are other ways. And in fact, each of these theorems that we knew were true about quadrilaterals that are parallelograms actually make quadrilaterals parallelograms if we look at their converse. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are congruent. It turns out the converse is true. If a quadrilateral has opposite angles congruent, both pairs of opposite angles congruent, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And if a quadrilateral is such that the diagonals bisect each other, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we have these theorems. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that's four ways to show things are parallelograms. If I have both pairs of opposite sides congruent, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If I have both pairs of opposite angles congruent, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If I have the diagonals bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And if I have just one pair of opposite sides that are both congruent and parallel, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And we will prove some of those in class. Right now you just need to write them down and then use them for your two immediate practice problems. You need to write each statement and complete it with either always, sometimes, or never. So number one, the diagonals of a quadrilateral, either always, sometimes, or never, bisect each other. And number two, if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is, either always, sometimes, or never, a parallelogram. Look at those theorems that we just stated in this video to help you. And that is the end of section 5.2.